Hi, and welcome to the Bob Charles Show right here on PyramidOneNetwork.com. Let me tell you about the guest that's coming up right now. His name is Michael Perlin. Michael believes there is a divine spark inside us all, and we can tap into that part of our consciousness and eventually become one with it. Many have accomplished this in the past and have tried to teach us these truths, but their words were twisted for mankind's own egoistic design. When we discover and realize our oneness with everyone and everything, we will finally have peace on Earth. Let me tell you a little bit more about Michael. Michael is the director and producer of a metaphysical film called Three Magic Words. It's distributed by Warner Brothers. It continues to sell out in theaters and is listed as the top 12th transformational film of 2012. On the show, we announce the release of a new book called Fantastic Adventures in Metaphysics, published by Ozark MT Publishing. The book explores deep into the theory that our origins reach even further back than we could have ever imagined. And it takes you on a fantastic adventure to long forgotten civilization, hidden knowledge, and gods with mystical powers. It also uncovers the secret teachings of all the great philosophers and spiritual geniuses in history to reveal their common themes. And listen a little bit more about the movie. This week in the spotlight, the lovely fourplex held a screening of a documentary that's creating quite a buzz. The film Three Magic Words is a spiritual journey that explores metaphysical beliefs and strives to show a universal theme throughout all of them. This film would be about the new revolution in consciousness. Because once they learn this truth, they realize the very old idea that we're all one. I've always had it in my heart to bring everybody together so there's no more war and there's no more killing and, and there's world peace. We are all coming together to bring a message out there that could possibly change the world and finally bring us to where we want to be. We've sold out every premiere we've done and even here they had to keep giving us a bigger theater because it continued to sell out. I would love people to walk out of the film feeling inspired and connected to their own path and connected to their own mission in the world. Perlin says the film is not religion-based and is one people of all ages and backgrounds can enjoy. May I introduce the man, the guy, Mr. Michael Perlin. Oh, yeah. Hi, Bob. We are there. Hi, Michael. Hi. Everything okay over there? I hear you. Hear you got a little little feedback going. Yeah, it's going a little cutting it in and out. <laughs> wow, what a great intro! You're welcome. You know, I, <laughs> I, I you know, I'll tell you something though. It's you know what you've done, what the movie's done, what the book has done. I mean, you and I, you and I are standing on the same piece of wood on the top of a 125 story building. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's one of these things where it's the balance in between. Is this real? You know, we're we're at that time now. We're also, I think, we might be ahead of our time. Could have, could be, mm-hmm. could be. You we see what's going we could on be out there. One of the things that you had said, or one of the things that that are connected to actually the book, it says war, poverty, pollution prejudice and human injustice are still going on today because we currently live in a world where separation rules the collective consciousness it also said this separation consciousness has caused man to identify with his religion causing a worldwide distortion of spirituality is that timely or what yeah well that's exactly what's going on and it has been going on for a long time. And that's what we, I mean, it's, 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 we have to keep saying it. We have to keep telling people that this is what's causing our division and this is what's causing the war. And the hate is uh, people identifying with 
I mean, it's just, it's so, it's just so, it's, it's kind of like, you they, don't they, know why people are still identifying with something that they, that they think is them, that they think is that everybody else should be just like them and that, you know, and, and I'm not putting down religion, but the people that identify with their religion and use it to hate and to kill and to hurt other people. That's just, I just can't believe it's still going on. There is, uh, what we're seeing right now, as a matter of fact, is right. a distortion of religion. I mean, people are reading in between the wrong lines. I mean, they're not, they're not reading where the roots of their religion even came from. That's exactly right. Which is which is terrible because they're saying, well, it, it, you know, it says this, it says that, it says the other. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna point at any any religion, but I've read all their Bibles, right? And, when you do the research, yeah, that's and, right. When you do the research and you look into the mysticism behind all the religions, they're all saying the same thing, and yeah. they're all telling us that we're all one. And love is number one. They don't talk <laughs> about hate; they talk about love. Yeah. So what's their problem with their reading? Get them license. Uh, get them glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something you know. They, <laughs> they need. They need some help. Now, yeah. in your movie, you got. You got to tell me a little bit about the movie. We'll go from the movie into the book. And and I, I have to ask you up front. I mean, I have to have you back here in, in January because I know I'm not going to touch, not even scratch the surface of this book. <laughs> okay. I mean, it is that good. And and the story that you're telling in it, as I said, is very timely. You're at the right place at the right time. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. From everything I saw, I, this is like this is like too good. <laughs> Thank you. It really really is. Thank you. So, let's talk about the movie a little bit. The movie, mm -hmm. uh even Oprah Oprah's people and that said it was an amazing movie. Where did mm -hmm. you get the idea for this type of movie? I mean, not, let's face it, people like yourself or, or myself or, or people I have on as ghosts, you know, not ghosts, but, you know, guests, which are actually ghosts of someone else. I mean, it seems like somebody else and they're coming forward and then telling us, hey, you know, it's about time you wake up. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I was, uh, when I was 18, I started, uh, reading a lot of uh, metaphysical material and I started started kind of on a path of of searching for um I guess you would say the meaning of life and and the purpose of my life and what what it all means and then I started I just, and this was before the internet so I would just browse through the used book sections of of uh, bookstores and every now and then you'd find a little new age section um it was very rare at the time um, but I would just kind of pick books off the shelf and read them, whether it was Eastern mysticism, Tibetan Buddhism, Hinduism, you name it. Um, I just was a sponge and I soaked it all up. And then uh, I came across a very famous book by U.S. Anderson called Three Magic Words, spelled with the uh, spelling three. And uh, that book tied in all of the material that I was reading Prior to that, it, it it actually revealed a common theme that that all of them were saying, and I, that's never happened to me. I didn't even think that was that was possible that there could actually be a common theme of all the religions, um, proven, documented, right there. And I that's when it hit me. I said, this has to be revealed. This and I and this was before I this was in Texas. I was I was thinking that. Uh, you know, how are we going to get this message? How, is, how am I going to get this message to the masses um, unless I go to Hollywood and make a film about it? Because there, there was no internet at the time, mm -hmm. right? So that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, this has to be a global message. So what did I do? I dropped everything, packed up, take, took, drove out to L.A. with no money in my pocket, slept in my car. Kind of the same story a lot of people have when they go out there. Yeah, we all do that, I think, somewhere yeah, along our, right. our way. Right, and uh, I worked my way up. Um, in, in the ranks and worked for uh, basically got in got several different odd jobs here and there just started working my way up and uh, got the means to make the film myself and write I wrote the script and started making it three magic words 
so it's inspired by the book. Yeah, but we have to. How long do we have to wait to to know what the three words are? Oh, you can. You, it's like you got to watch the like movie. Me telling you the end of the movie without yeah. without you saying it. Uh, I sent you. I sent you my th- my three weir- words. You did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'll say it, but everybody, everybody actually that that listens to me on the on the uh, on the the network for the last four years, and I've been saying the same thing. It is time, mm. and I said that four years ago, right? So, right. and I mean, it's still true. It is time. Things that are happening are happening for a purpose. It is. It is a projected. How would you say it? It's a projected target. The things that are happening are happening for a reason, and when they're over. Mm. Things get better because there is mm-hmm. nowhere where to go, but with, with the direction everything's going in, everything's going to blow up first, and then everything's going to be back to normal. I just hope not too bad. Mm, yeah, well, we're all saying, you know, there's a million different stories out there about things hitting the hitting the planet and and earthquakes and uh, uh, changing of the poles and all kinds of things. And I'm saying to myself, like, hey, you know, you just take take away my my organic food and I'm finished. <laughs> so, so that's it that and my coffee forget about it take away my coffee i'm really finished well you know what the way i the way that i just keep seeing it the whole picture it helps me a lot is to just see i see myself as um back in time like if i if i if i wanted to go back in time and experience the way it was in a primitive culture where people are still fighting wars and over religion and over race and over land I uh, would travel back here and see uh, what it would be like. What so, do you? Yeah, while you're on that subject, Ned, we also you also talk about in the in the uh, the book, and that from what I read about it, and I'll go into that in a second. But there's a lot of things that you're talking about on the planet experience and off the planet experiences. Things that people are going through now, and a lot of them are just waking up to the fact that like, hey, you know, where there's more to life than what we think it is. Mm -hmm. So, tell us a little bit about that. You might have to rephrase the question because you cut in and out at some of those parts. Ah, you're on Wi-Fi. Ah, yes. Okay. Say, let's put it this way. Say, um, you have out-of-body experiences. Or people believe or, or become, um, how would you say it? Um, a psychic in a way. Like we all do it all the time. You know, you'll turn around, the telephone will ring and you'll know who's on the telephone mm-hmm. just because it rang. All of these things are becoming more prevalent right now to the time. We are, all of these things that are going on as far as, uh, telepathy and things like that, we've always had it. Mm-hmm. The memories that we lost hundreds and thousands of years ago because of the changes of what happened or what happened to the planet or who knows. I mean, our, our humanity was reset somehow and we forgot, but the memories are coming back slowly. Yes. And this is what's going to stabilize what is so unstabilized at this time. Yeah. Well... Sure, I, I can tell you. Uh, I wrote a chapter about that in my book called "The Great Year." Um, if you're a metaphysical researcher, you probably have heard of that. It's the Hindus call it the Great Year, and there's certain ages that we go through. It's on a twenty-six thousand year eclipse, ecliptical um, cycle of of the uh, the zodiac, and it's also scientifically, um, according to astrology, you can you can um, you can see that we go through every 2,000 years, our, our, uh, the sun actually t- travels through a different zodiac symbol. And according to the ancients, um, we have 11,000 years of a dark age, and then we go through 11 or 12,000 years of a light, of the age of light, when we start to wake up. And it, this cycle, it's, it's a never ending cycle. And what, we try to do is maintain everything that we achieved during the golden age before we go into a dark one. And, uh, the last golden age we had, we had beautiful enlightened, uh, societies. Um, and people had the technology to build the most amazing structures. And we, we tried to hold on to it according to, this is according to a lot of different, um, esoteric, uh, um, and advanced knowledge that, 
you can still find today, that there were just amazing civilizations long, long time ago. And once we travel into that, that dark age, we lost it. We lost it all. There's, we, we start to lose, um, we start to digress into an enlightened way of thinking. And, um, unfortunately, a lot of people use that, um, uh, a lot of people or a lot of, um, people that choose the dark side, mm. they use it to, uh, uh for, to suppress not the knowledge. They burn it. They burn people to the stake. They chop people's heads off and it gets really bad like the middle ages or the dark ages as we call them and we're just now coming out of the very end of that last uh cycle of uh and uh as you can see you know we're not as bad as we used to be unfortunately now we have weapons of mass destruction so now we you know that's something we 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 got to get over um but uh the light side, on the light side, we're moving out of it. We're getting, we're, supposedly we're going into the age, an age of light, um, to where we're starting, we're start, we're going to start waking up to the reality that we're all uh, connected to this divine consciousness, uh, or creator in the universe. And then we start to feel that. We'll start to tap into that. We start to feel connected to everything. You know, I, I talk to people every day about this. And one thing that I say, and I don't know, you can, you can disagree with me if, if you want to. Or correct me, whichever. But, you know, people keep saying, well, do I have to do this? In other words, do they have to meditate? Do they have to take recce lessons? Do they have to, you know, do yoga and, you know, and all these things? And I keep telling people every single day, no, you don't. Just start loving yourself. Period. That's it. End of story. And your neighbor, you know, shake a hand. Be nice. Smile to a person. Spreads. It's awareness. It's one person being nice to another person. That's so a really good you point. Don't yeah. have to go through all of this. I mean, people think that they have to go to a they they have to go to a uh, you know a recce center, or or you know a spiritual center or something like that to be awakened. Some people need to be talked to. I'll give you that. But as far as what's happening right now. These are natural things that are happening. This is energy. This is earth energy. This is universe energy. These are things that, that are changing you, your DNA, your attitude, and everything else that's connected in with you at the same time. And it's going to happen whether you like it or not. It's up to you to accept it, bring it into your heart, and keep it. These are good yep. things. I actually agree with you. I mean, these are good 100%. things. Yeah. These are not things. These are things that can happen to everybody. They just have to allow it. That's all. Yeah. Well, the, here's the thing is you, all that stuff is good to do if you choose to for your, just your basic mental health. Oh, sure. If you want to work on your body or your, your mind or your consciousness. Exactly. It's great. But yes, you, to get to a place where you can actually love everyone else equally, even your enemies, you know, even like l knowing that they're just not quite awake yet and just to not judge them, that's a tough place to get to. And the reason it's so tough is because a lot of people have their own stuff that they're still holding on to that they haven't even worked out for, with themselves, people they need to forgive, um, things that they've done that they regret, things that they haven't done. So that's really to get there, you have to forgive either yourself others start to love yourself as you mentioned and um you really work on yourself before you can actually start work on everybody with, else right exactly yeah that's where it starts it starts it starts from within if you can set an example you know be that divine conscious being and unconditional love for everyone like a puppy go ahead tell me about a puppy i got one sitting under me <laughs> <laughs> puppies have <laughs> unconditional love they're born with it they are and we are too. That's right. We are too. See what happens to us. It is very, very true. I tell everybody all the time. I mean, you might laugh at this, but uh, it, it's, it really works. It really does. I mean, I've had people write me emails, Ned, saying, you know, they tried it. Then they tried it again. Then they thought it was totally out of my mind. So they tried it again. And finally, it worked. When you go into the, the bathroom in the morning, you know, everybody goes in. Now, let's face it. We're going to shave. We're going to do our, our stuff, our hair, or, you know, whatever. Look in the mirror. Close. Look into your eyes. 
into your eyes. I don't mean looking around the room. Don't look at the wall behind you or anything else. Look into your eyeball and say, I love you. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I am dead That's serious. Great. If you do it enough, the, the eyes are the windows to your world. You will let yourself into yourself. It's not hypnotism. Somebody said maybe it's hypnotism. No, it's not hypnotism whatsoever. It's looking into the eyes of yourself. If you can look into your own eyes, you can look into everyone else's and tell them you love them. Mm -hmm. And they will then be hypnotized into what you're doing because they'll turn around, look in your eyes, and they'll do the same thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a cool thing to do. Yeah. And I was just thinking about all these alpha males that uh, have to be all macho and they don't want to get in touch with their emotions because we, I don't know if it, their, their father raised them that way or they've been taught by society that way. Um, that, that might sound too mushy for them to even try. You know what? Sometimes the bigger ones are the easiest ones to fall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I may be six foot one, but I mean, I was always the guy that was like 150, 155 pounds, you know, and slender. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. one of those kind of guys. Trust me, you wouldn't want to mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Here. like I'm a wily little guy. A teddy bear. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, let's go back to the book a little bit. On chapter three, you have ancient myths and legend. Mm -hmm. Explain. Ancient myths, what do you mean by that? Well, stories that we've heard in the past about um, mystical beings that, ha that had powers to um, – just powers to do anything they wanted to, inhuman powers. Um, and there, there are stories about this all over the world, about these gods who came down from the sky. And science – has for so long has just said call these things legends these things myths religious myths or whatever they might might have you but but alongside that in the same cultures we have these structures that are unexplained that are impossible for anyone even today with our technology to even duplicate and they have no idea how they were built how they were quarried how they were carried how they were cut and these mm -hmm. things are all over the world yep and the only explanation we're coming up with now is that they had some kind of technology that actually could either float heavy objects or or defy gravity or you know something that we don't even know so this is what i mean by ancient myths and legends and i think that ancient science ancient technology is is uh we're we're starting to catch up with it with what we're learning right now about about science, what yeah, we're me, doing. Let me tell you how close you are to the masters. Last night I spoke to um, Graham Hancock. Mm, and love he him. also, and he's been on my show and before, Robert Schock. Mm. He's been on a couple of times. And we spoke about the same thing that's in your chapter three that speaks about the weathered or the sphinx that was weathered by extensive rain field, a uh, rainfall over 10,000 years ago. We were talking about things like this. These are legends. But these yep. are now, just now, now this is from Robert and this is from uh, Graham also, these are things that are now all being discovered. They're being laid out in front of us right now. These are things that we wouldn't have known. The reason being is because we are becoming awakened. Right. We're getting, we're getting more and more in touch with what, with the truth because we have that inside us. We, we know the difference. We can, we can tap into it. And when we hear something like that, that's actually what happened to me. And I got to give a lot of credit to Graham Hancock and John Anthony West because they were my first teachers of this material. I mean, there's, they were the, they were my mentors. And um, you know what's funny is I I met this woman. I was working at uh, Fidelity Investments when I got out of college in a cubicle, and this woman sitting next to me was into mysticism, and uh, she start saying the wildest things and i'd be like what are you what are you talking about and she's like oh yeah the the ancient um scrolls of atlantis are buried beneath the sphinx in egypt but under the right paw of the sphinx and i'm like atlantis what are you talking about what well, is just that's just a myth uh -huh. and she said okay you can believe whatever you want she left it just like that but 
A couple weeks later, I came back and I said, tell me more. Because this is the first time I ever heard of anything, that anything in Egypt could be older than we actually thought. Oh, yeah. She told me everything. And I knew it was true. I knew that that Sphinx was older. I knew that the pyramids were older. And there was stuff we were never told. People laugh at me all the time when I tell them that the Sphinx came first, not the pyramids. The pyramids are actually younger than the Sphinx. Well, I wouldn't state anything to be fact yet because we're more and more evidence is going to come out where we're going to start oh, yeah. to learn stuff that we didn't even know. We, I mean, really, this stuff could be millions of years old. There is, there is. We were talking about uh, Graham and I were talking about this last night, and yeah. he he doesn't he doesn't deny what what I said whatsoever. We wow. we got we got history. We've found pieces of history that go back seven hundred thousand years. Yep. If that's the case, then my theory about being five this is being the, the fifth civil, civilization as we know it has to be true. Because if you go back 800,000 years, that would be the completion of five total complete civilizations, including Mu and Atlantis. Now, here's the thing that I, and I talk about this in my book, and this is what I want to, you know, everybody wants, I want everybody to be careful with. And that is that, um, you, you might, you might know, hear something about the Anunnaki with the Sumerian, mm -hmm. um, legends. Or the what the Hopis and Mayans talk about, you might hear about. Um, you might have read the Urantia book and heard about the way they explain it in there, and the the angels who came down and mated with humans, and the giants that were that used to be on this planet. So you don't want to just choose one thing and say, "Oh, well, if we were here that long, then it was the Anunnaki who came down and created us." You you don't want to do that because what I found this is in my book. So many things were actually going on on during, at so many different times in our history. It's very hard to pinpoint exactly where and what and how. There are so many different legends, so many different cultures of different advanced beings who came down and created civilizations all over the planet. So we, we can't really just claim one thing actually happened and, and that was it. You know, it's funny That's, though. As many times, like what you're saying, is probably very true because let's face it, our universe doesn't have, I mean, there's no way you can carbon date the universe. We do know there are, there are stars a lot older than we are. Yeah. So you can't, you can't turn around and say we're the only, uh, you know, the only thing on, on this or in this universe. It's impossible. Right. Not only that, but you'd have to be out of your mind to think like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, man, come on. You know, I mean, if we're here, somebody else is somewhere else. And obviously, yep. if we're here now and we're seeing, we're seeing evidence of something being bigger and better than we are. Technology wise, who knows about the, how their, how their humanity is in their own, in, in their own vein of what they do. But there are people that are around longer than we are to the point that they've built things that they can actually get here right you know now, who uh i, I who, was gonna uh, i was gonna... a very good example of that was gene ronenberry with star trek bingo and, we, that's yeah. another thing we talked about last night i mean it was mm -hmm. it was crazy but this is a guy who i mean he he channeled somehow oh, these yeah. these oh, are yeah. things that are not far-fetched none of it what surprises me is that this show was in the late sixties and it's been, and it, it had several other shows, huge franchise after that. It's all there, all the information that, I mean, it, that's, I, I think it was the very first thing that, that woke me up from who I used to be. And it, it, it's, and it, we still have not gotten, gone, you know, further into this, into a better world as it is shown in that, in that series. And I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for us to wake up. Let me let me ask you a question. I, I mean, I ask everybody this question now. What would you define waking up? What are you going to do? What are people going to find when they wake up? That's I can answer that in a very simple way. Beauty. And if I if I was in charge, 
and I know a lot of people can argue this, <laughs> say, well, you can't do that. I would make war illegal. Okay. Simple as that. All right. Now you want my answer to that. Yes. You're on, you're on, you, I tell, I told you we're on the same board, just on a, on a, you know, on a very tall building. I would turn around and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to cancel wars. We're going to bring home our guys. You bring home your guys. Everybody in that goes home. Have a nice dinner or whatever else. And then come outside and then let's talk. That's it. And it just, Finish it. The, you know, the China, we see did it the Chinese or the Japanese. They had a whole bunch of people that were doing this big, uh, big, not a riot, but I mean, they had this big demonstration going on over there and they were ordered to arrest everybody. So what did the, the police do? Well, the police, of course, there being like a couple of hundred people that were doing this thing and it was only maybe 40, 50 cops. Cops, this was on, on a building that had stairway on it, looked like the, uh, the New York, uh, library. You know, and the cops just sat down on the steps. They just stopped what they were doing and sat down. Do you know everybody turned around and went home? Well, that's all they did. All they did was sat down and stopped. As soon as there was no aggressive aggressive actions against another aggressive action, it just one canceled the other out. And that was it. Well, Look what Gandhi did. He was one of the major influences of that of of how that would how that works. Nonviolence. You could accomplish so much more. MLK did it. They were all examples, but we didn't take their lead. Nope. We killed you know? them instead. Yeah, exactly. We 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 did completely so, the other. So again, that's my point. That we're still in. To me, I think we're still living in primitive times. And if time doesn't exist. If there's many realities going on at once, and there's a future right now that we're actually living in, then we are in a primitive time. And we have to just realize it and know that and just do whatever we can to make it a better place. Someone's answer to that was, it depends upon which dimension you believe is your now. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that was, I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> you know, it's like, but, it, right. but think right. about it. It's true. It is true. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. now is what you believe it is. It's not that somebody, you know, turned around and said, well, you know, this is going to happen in five minutes. No, we're not talking linear time. We're talking now time. Like three seconds from now, it's still now. Yep. Go figure. I mean, and then again, you know, don't forget, we were the human beings at one point or another that actually invented time. We That's don't, true. We don't need time. I don't know how many people out there, you know, I, raise your hands, all of you. How many people get up in the morning and don't need an alarm clock? Does anybody out there, anybody, I mean, let, let me see it in the, in the chat box or something. I, I mean, I'm serious. I get up every single morning at 4 o'clock, maybe 5 minutes to, maybe 5 minutes after, but it's always in that 10-minute window. And the dog and I go out and we do our little meditation walk at 4 o'clock in the morning. Been doing it forever. And that's what we do. I don't have to ever set a clock. Four o'clock in the morning, bam, I'm up. And I can be in any condition. I can be tired beyond anything. So if I don't need it, nobody else does either. Time is the passing of events. And we've decided to measure it and put a linear system on it. Exactly. With a, with a clock. Now, you also said in, in there's uh, one of the things that they want here was that there have been structures built all over the world that are simply out of place and out of time. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I actually uh, talked about that earlier in this in the talk. Um, that um, numerous structures, there's thing uh, structures in um, in in, uh, in Iraq it used to be Samaria. Structures in Egypt, of course. Structures in um, in Mexico. There are we can't we cannot explain them. We cannot duplicate them. We don't know how they did them. There so, are things that are fused together using extreme heat. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, in South America. You know, there's these giant blocks that are puzzled together. They 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 have no idea how they cut these puzzles into these blocks and then fuse these rocks together they just there's no technology around at that time to do that kind of thing still still unexplained today but i believe that our advanced um 
experts that are behind the powers that be know exactly who and when and what these people were doing and why they were built. I think they have known all this, and I think we've had this information. Um, I think it's been available even before um, our modern day age. I think there was so much material that was destroyed in the Alexandrian Library that talked about who these beings were and who came here before, you know, before our civilization. It's all been destroyed. Not all of it, but most of it. So we're just now we're we're starting to get more of the more of the stuff that happened just from our own consciousness. People channeling, people sitting in meditation and transcribing what they hear. Um, esoteric material coming out of the um, Freemasons, you know, these high level degree Masons that are releasing things. So, like like Manly P. Hall for for example, he was he spent his entire life revealing all these truths to the public. And, you know, so we have we have a lot of material. It's there. In in the book, do you go into or do you touch things like uh, I don't know crooked governments, um, big pharmacies or pharmacy? Let's put it that way. Um, GMO, um, chemtrails. All of that. I mean, we're talking, what I'm talking about here is like the destruction of humanity that's engineered by someone. Um, I don't know if they're trying to, if it's the destruction. I think it's more about the control, keeping, keeping, um, well, that's the first, that's the first part, actually. Either the control first, and then once they have control of you, and that, then they teach you to till yourself. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a group that wants to stay on top of the pyramid um, and stay above um, financially, stay in power. I just, I, I don't know, you know, because it's so such classified stuff. I can't really say that I know the truth, but uh, absolutely, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm aware of all the conspiracies. I, I do talk a lot about them in my book, just as. For more for informational purposes, I don't really take a side, but I put it. I, I just I do talk about it, just to show that they're there, especially the financial system and what ha- what's happened with the money. You mean the money we don't have? Correct. <laughs> the, money, <laughs> the money with no backing whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, the the Federal Reserve that's not federal, right? And the IRS. At least, our forefathers warned against this too, which is the funny thing. We we this country was built upon um, a, a very mystical plan for America um, by, by uh, St. Germain and Francis Bacon. And you can look it up and you can do your research. And they really had a mystical plan. And even George Washington, so many of the great presidents were came from uh, a Freemason background. And they came here to create a, a new country based on um, freedom and without a dictatorship. And to spread a universal language across the planet and they were succeeding and they warned us against the banks. They said, if the banks ever get control of our, of our, of our uh, monetary system, that we will find the very, the ancestors, I mean, not the ancestors, the children of our very forefathers living on the streets. And we see that every day. Yep. We see that every day, the millions and millions of dollars, and you're 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 right. You're on the point of that one. You see so many millions of people that are homeless, hungry, clo- what's his uh, clothes? They don't hardly have any, and that they're freezing out in some of the weather net that's around. Thank God that we have a warm weather winter so far. All of these things that are going on, yet they will spend billion dollars a week to fight somebody. Yep. Please, you know, stop it. Start feeding people. You know, these are your people. We worked all our life, right? And you did too, Michael. We all, it's in our pay- paycheck. Our taxes come out. We pay this. We pay that. We pay the other thing. Come on. We're 400 million people in this country. Think about how much money and that is actually taken out of people's pockets all around the whole world. If you take that money and you put that in a big pot and said, okay, everybody gets a little piece of it, 
we'd be okay for the rest of our lives as we know it. Yeah, and I, I, I just don't believe it's supposed to be like this on this planet. And I think all we can do is just let time, like, you know, like they say, time heals. Time, as we were talking about before, in the linear sense of the word on this planet, has given women the ability to vote, has uh, allowed um, Afro-Americans. Um, it has eventually, we've been able to abolish slavery and a lot of things that we've even voted a black president. That's time. So all we can do is just say time, let's get over this. Let's Let's start to teach our children who are born with unconditional love, like a puppy, stop putting a gun in their hand and, you know, put a puppy in their hand. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, no, yeah. I'm, I'm crazy enough to do it. Right. <laughs> the thing, you know, look, we're looking at this gun thing and that too. You brought that up and, and I, you know, just to embellish a little bit, all these people that are getting these, these guns and they're talking about legal guns and all this other kind of stuff and that the people are buying and they're shooting each other and everything. You know, seriously, I mean, do they, do they have to, I mean, it's because of the media we find out about all these things. These things have been going on for a long, long time. Ever yeah. since there's a cell phone, there's a picture or there's a recording of a, of a voice or something. And now these things are coming out our ears. They're on Twitter. They're on Facebook. They're on all kind of Pinterest. They're on a billion different things that are going on right now. We're seeing them in live time when they have, when they happen from all over the world. So all of a sudden now things are getting out of control. No, things aren't getting out of control. They've been out of control. Just you didn't know about it. And it's the fear thing too that, uh, fear when you're a power and you're in control of an entire country and you have a very strong military force and a, and a, uh, over everyone else. Fear makes you richer. Mm hmm. Yep. Fear Absolutely. will give you more funding for your weapons. Fear will allow you to go into some other country and take over. And I'm not putting any, any, I'm not, I'm definitely not saying anything against our government or our decisions and our military. But I really think that, like you said, we need to talk first before we act. And in the situation where somebody doesn't want to talk, <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. We can hang him out somewhere. <laughs> in fact, take, well, he, take his clothes away, take his food away, and that, and put make him homeless for a while. Trust me, he'll come around quick. You just have to watch more Star Trek. You've got to, see in there. They they always found a solution before they had to actually go to war. They they went in there and they found a solution. And sometimes it wasn't always, uh, let's say, a, 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 a peaceful solution. Sometimes they turn around and say, "Look." This is the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. And if you don't like it, too bad. And the other guy would usually pick up his toys and go home. Yeah. <laughs> He'd go, I don't and, want to deal with that. Goodbye. Yeah. And I'll tell you why war is such a bad idea. Aside from all the other common sense reasons, it has creates so many more problems in the long run. Worse problems, as we know. We don't even have to go into them. It is always a, a bad result. We, we also know about the other side of the war theory, which war creates a market so a yeah. market creates supposedly jobs and of course people that are happy and they're working because they're making things for a war they get happy we got guys that are coming back right now from our war and uh, i see them every day i'm in i'm in charleston south carolina we have military bases right here and i meet and i talk to these people every single day guys that have been there for one two three terms i mean um um, trips over there to the other side. And let me tell you something. The stories net that I hear are not what you see on TV. Right. And the people over there are not even anything like. The, the things that you see on TV are seconds of an event. That's it. The people that are over there, like they, they keep on saying that everybody over there hates us. They don't. I haven't heard anybody tell me. They, they said there's like these groups. Like we have gangs here. 
even in L.A. I mean, you got you know groups out there that, that hate hate everybody. But you know, uh, if that's the thing, and there's groups that that hate everybody, well, fine. There's those groups, and of course, those just like you said, selling fear makes money. Yep. So of course they're going to show you those people that they hate us at that particular moment in there now. <laughs> I'm going to revert back to that one. But the rest of the people that are there are very nice to us that they're like, you know, like, hey, you know, they know we're doing the best we possibly can. Most of the time that we're helping them. So seriously, I mean, we're just we should not police the world. That's what I think. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think as an individual, you know, that just brings me back to what can you do? What can we do to bring to bring this world into a better future? And I'd say just put your two cents in. I always say Gandhi, MLK, John Lennon, these guys put like 10 to 15 cents in. All we got to do is two. Everybody just put in two cents. My movie was one cents. My book was another. I was just going to mention on that. In the movie and in the book, did you come out with a solution? I did. In both of them? Yep. Okay. Give us a hint on the on the, the movie. <laughs> Give me a hint on the solution? Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, no, no. Yeah, what I mean by hint is like, okay, if we were going in a direction now, my solution, I, st- I told you, is put the guns down and walk away. Yeah, but you have to change. The, the solution comes from changing within in order to even come up to the conclusion that you should put your gun down. You can't just... The, it, it's someone who, who's holding a gun who wants to kill someone is... is it, it, they're pretty much, they're solid. They're, they're, they're in their mindset, what they're going to do, who they are. They are that. They are, they are protecting and serving a bigger purpose. And so, and that's fine. That's fine. They're just doing what they were taught to do. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It has to start from way before that. And, you know, you, you, if you want to be peaceful, you want to be nonviolent, you want to, you want to evolve into a higher consciousness being, then you have to work on yourself from within and you have to understand the separation consciousness is what's causing all the problems in the world. And when you know that that's the problem, you start looking at the solution, which is unity and knowing that uh, somehow there's a way for you to see and feel your connection with everyone and everything. And that means with the earth, with animals, with nature and with people. And that's what um, these great, sages and masters did and that that's and they could feel that they could they could see the connection with everyone knowing that everyone was a part of that and that's the only that's really the solution right there is so, to get to that point so in your movie that is exactly what you put on the film yes and it shows you how to get there oh and it shows you how to get there okay oh yeah Oh yeah. Just a real, real quickie in that. Can people get a copy of this? How do you get a copy of that? You go to Amazon. Okay, that's where the mo- that's where the movie is. You can buy the DVD on Amazon, Three Magic Words, or you can go to the website and click on the link to buy it there. Three Magic Words Movie dot com. Very good. Or you can just go right to the right to the blog right here at the station. You go to Bob Charles Show dot blogspot dot com and you can find the, the links to go right over right there right Great. there right now even now Thanks, Bob. what is the next thing the next thing on your plate well that's actually a really good question once you do a book and then you do a do a movie and then a book um, a lot of people start teaching workshops and i've already been asked to do that i just haven't decided if i'm going to do that yet to teach teach what are you going to teach right. what's that what are you going to teach oh well th- these teachings the, ah. the philosophy on how to get to that point, how to get to a higher consciousness and understanding and feeling your connection with everyone and everything. And if you, you know, if you wanted that, some people may not want that. Yeah, it's very true. Very, very true. You but know, I feel things it every day. What you're saying right here, right now on this, on this radio show. And of course, this thing, they, you, you're going to be heard another 10 times in the next two weeks, but. The people who are listening to these shows right now are realizing that these shows are educative tools for them. All they have to do is think about what we're saying. Right. 
And the energy that's coming out of this show is touching every single person that's listening. Did anyone ever say that to you? Like every single time they watch your movie, they feel the the movie? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had um, someone who was um, very Jewish watch my film. And she came at me afterwards screaming at me um, because of what Hitler did and that she could never forgive him. And uh, the next day she came back and she bought a DVD and tears in her eyes. She had a dream that night. I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot about the dream part. She went to home that night. She had a dream and then she came back and said with tears in her eyes and bought the DVD. See, people yeah. are waking up. Yeah. You know, all these things that did happen, it's okay. It's okay to, to remember, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's okay to remember where you came from. As a matter of fact, you should do more research to find out where you came from so you could understand where you are today. That helps. But to live in the, in the past is not a good thing because tomorrow is going to be a great day. So don't keep going backwards. Remember backwards because backwards is what makes today what it is right michael absolutely How do you... i can uh i can add to that go i'd love to add to that about forgiveness and then my the, the film is not about that um but it it can take you to a place to where you understand that it's really necessary for your evolution if you wanted to go there and there's a place where you can get to that goes beyond forgiveness yeah. and once you realize that Anything you're holding on to, anything anybody you think anybody has ever done to you, you realize you don't even need to forgive them because they never did anything to you. You're not a victim. Once you get to that point, you realize you don't have anything to forgive. And that, that's the, that's going beyond forgiveness. That's where you don't even have, have anything anymore. Anything you're holding on to. That helps you go so much higher to much higher level in consciousness. Cool. So yeah. what we're going to do is I'm going to get a, I definitely have to get a copy of the full book, full book. <laughs> so I can read through the whole thing of that, but you get, you got to come back in it because we got to talk about some more things. What I, I want to do it, it was an honor having you on the show, obviously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this out. There is someone else in it who's been on my show. Dolores Cannon. Mm. She my had, guardian angel. she had, she had some very, very nice things in that to say with the show. So I want to play out with that so that everybody can listen to Dolores, everyone who's tuned into the show and that just to hear. And I have her archives, too, that play on here. And, you know, it's it's amazing because we, we see, like, all of a sudden, if I make an announcement on a blog or something, that, that I'm going to have that archive on. People are listening all over the world. There's countries I didn't even know existed. <clears throat> when we look up, you know, when we look up and that who clicked on. Yeah. You know what? Dolores sponsored our the L.A. the uh, London premiere of the movie and published my book. So you know, a huge thanks. So much gratitude for her. She's she's an awesome lady. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. It was and a we will we will be in touch. Great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Bob. All right, Michael. You have a great much evening good. now. You too. Lots of love. Now, to everybody out there, I was just talking about uh, Dolores Cannon. Take a listen. Fear is the strongest emotion that a human has. We have to let go of that so that we can move into a new direction. Fear holds us back. It cripples us. And too many people are bound up in it. That's one of the things I've been told to tell people is to let go of fear. Also to let go of karma. Those are the two main things because we drag karma around. It's like a lot of baggage and garbage. And it holds us back and makes us sick. Until we can dump these things, we're not going to be able to move forward into the new world, the new dimension, and the new frequencies. But that was my main message I've been told to tell people is to release karma because in anything that's going to hold you back, we don't need. Karma is the garbage and the baggage we carry around with us. 
through the different lifetimes. Sometimes it goes through a relationship, and sometimes we've had the relationship with the same people through many lifetimes, set up a pattern on the same life, the same situations repeating itself again and again. Because if you don't work it out, you have to come back and do it over again. And before you come into a life, you're on the other side, you're reviewing your life you just left. And karma is the law of balance, cause and effect. If you've done something in the other life, you don't get out of it. Not even this life either. Everything you do, what goes around, comes around. But when you're on the other side, you discuss the life you've just left with those people you were involved with. And you'll say, well, we didn't do such a good job, did we? Let's go back and try it again. This time you be the husband, I'll be the wife. You be the mother, I'll be the daughter. You can switch roles around any way you want. But you're brought back into the same situation again and again. That's why a lot of people can't understand, why do I keep drawing the same thing to me over and over again, the same kind of people, the same kind of situation? It's because they have not worked it out yet. They've not figured it out. The same situation again and again. And this is what happens. And if you don't work it out, you're going to have to come back and do it again with the same people. So the idea is to do it now, to get rid of it now. Get rid of the garbage and the baggage. And you can identify it by those feelings. Do Is there something about the situation that doesn't feel right? Um, one of the best ways to get rid of it is just to forgive the person and release it and let it go. And I've had clients that tell me, I can't forgive them and let them go. You don't know what they did to me. But as long as they're holding on to it, that's karma. When you release it, you've let it go and you don't have that karma anymore. But they have a terrible time doing it because they're so stuck with that. But until you can release it and let the person go with love, you say, you go your way, I'll go mine, it's not working, let's tear up the contract. we just not going to work anymore. You go your way, I'll go mine. When you do that, it's like a miracle happens. You don't have to do it face to face. You can do it well, mentally to the person. Saying enough is enough. I've had it. You go your way, I'll go mine, we tear up the contract. And then when it happens, all of a sudden they can't push the buttons anymore. It's only a game anyway. You ever notice that? People know what buttons to push to get you upset, to get you angry, to get a reaction out of you. Once you forgive them, let it go and release it, they can't push the buttons anymore. It doesn't bother you anymore then it's no fun, and they stop. But then you release out of it, and you go on to your next lesson, which may or may not be better, but at least it's a different lesson. And then you get to where you realize when you are creating karma, and you know how to stop it before it goes any further. That's what this time is all about, getting rid of the karma, don't carry it any further, and try not to create any more. That's what this time is about right now. And I said earlier, getting rid of the fear. The fear and the karma, the two things you've got to let go of. But um, we're coming to a time, especially with the new earth, where the karma won't exist anymore. Those that still have it and hang on to it are not going to move forward. It's the main cause of cancer especially in the intestinal area, is holding on to anger, holding on to it, not being able to talk about it, not being able to release it. And after a while, it just begins to churn around, begins to eat away at the organs, and it creates cancer because we hold everything within. That's the main thing I've found with cancer. The person can't talk about it, they can't release it. And... Um, I had one man to come to me who had cancer in every part of his body. Every time the doctors would operate on one part, it would come back in another part. He'd operate there, it would come back somewhere else in his body. And I asked him, are you angry at anything? 
He said, yes, my ex-wife, I hate her. She has the children and she won't let me see them. And I said, the only way you're going to get rid of this is to forgive her and release her and let her go. He said, I can't do that. I can't forgive her. If I forgive her, she has won. I said, she will win if she kills you. It's that simple. We don't hurt anybody else. We're only hurting ourselves by holding all of these things in. That's what I do in my work is to get people to realize this. And I want to tell everybody, too, that what you've just listened to from Dolores Cannon is something that Michael and I were talking about all during this last meeting. And these are things that we have to do. We have to do as a humanity, as a person, as our souls. There is new things in front of us. It's up to us to look forward, not backwards. Live in the now, not the then. Let's keep going forward. And when we're talking about that, I want to also tell you that you can go to the movie website. It's 3 Magic Words Movie.com and the book to get Fantastic Adventures Metaphysics is go to Fantastic Adventure Book. Fantastic Adventures Book.com. See, my memory still works. Hey, you know what? There's a lot of things going on, and I want to tell everybody God bless y'all. Bob Charles.